The Pacific Crest Trail and the Appalachian Trail are popular places for hikers to challenge themselves. But Wisconsin also has a trail not too different from those busy and frequently visited ones. The Ice Age Trail is one of just 11 National Scenic Trails in the U.S., and it's all contained right here in the state. Through hiking the trail is becoming more and more popular, according to Melissa Pyrrhic with the Ice Age Trail Alliance. She, along with Amanda Weibel from Travel Wisconsin, joined Lake Effect's Becky Mortensen for this month's Wandering Wisconsin, a monthly conversation where we bring you suggestions for great places to visit throughout the state. Today's topic is perfect for those who like to wander our state. We're talking about the Ice Age Trail. It's one of just 11 national scenic trails in the U.S. It's a meandering trail that stretches from east to the west side of the state through some of the state's most beautiful natural areas. So, Melissa... Can you describe the trail's route and some features of the trail? Yeah, so the trail is approximately 1,200 miles. It runs from St. Croix Falls all the way down as far as Janesville, where it's the southernmost point of the trail, up to Pottawatomie State Park in Sturgeon Bay. The route of the trail roughly follows where the last glacier ended. And so the trail is full of geological significance, and it takes you through so many great areas of the state. The path is very different from the north woods down into the southern area, which is more urban, and then up into the Door County area. It's just there's a lot of variety on the trail. And the trail's been around since the 1950s. Can you talk a little bit about how the trail was established? Sure. In the 1950s, Ray Zilmer first envisioned the idea of what was to become the Ice Age Trail. He was really enamored with the topography and the geology of the northern Kettle Moraines, and he knew a lot about the glaciation that took place in the state. At the time, though, he envisioned it as a national park, a thousand-mile-long national park. Ultimately, the National Park Service decides, hey, they don't have an interest of having a a national park that's that long. And unfortunately, Zilmer dies unexpectedly. And the efforts kind of die back for a few years until Congressman Henry Royce comes into play. And he kind of picks the idea back up of this national trail. And he really championed the idea of a trail through Wisconsin that would highlight the important glaciation that happened in our state. And so, um, you know, through the course of many events and many years, the Ice Age Trail was formed in 1980. What are some of the most popular stretches of the trail? There are more than 100 segments of trail and Some of the most popular segments, I mean, you have um, the section that runs through Interstate State Park, um, which is beautiful, and that's where the western terminus of the trail is, and it it looks out over the river, and it's gorgeous. Um, You have the Dells of the Eau Claire, another spectacular um, and short segment. Um, You have the great segments that go through Lang Lane County that are all run through county forest land. You have segments in Taylor County that run through the Shamanigan Nicolay National Forest. Those segments really give you a north woods feel. Um, people will see bears sometimes in those segments. Um, of course, Devil's Lake State Park, the trail runs around Devil's Lake. That's always a popular place. Um, But one of the great things about the trail is that it takes you to these places that you probably would never otherwise visit. For example, Milton. I've lived in Wisconsin my whole life, and it wasn't until I started hiking the trail that I went to Milton. And the trail runs through many, many communities, including Milton, and it's lovely. You get to check out these small towns in Wisconsin and really get a feel for Wisconsin, you know? You have the Southern Kettle Moraines, the segments that run through the Southern Kettle Moraines are fun and hilly. The Northern Kettle Moraines, even more hilly. 
oh, and then you go through the segment of Point Beach, and that's spectacular. You walk along the sand, you have the lake. I mean, it can also be miserable if you hit it when it's raining and cold. But um, I mean, there's just so many great places along the trail. Um, and if you talk to hikers, everybody has a different favorite segment. And as you said, this thing is like more than a thousand miles long and doesn't just attract day hikers. People can backpack and through hike this trail. So what would that experience be like? Well, I don't have firsthand knowledge because I am a segment hiker and uh, the majority of the people who hike the whole trail are segment hikers. So that just means they complete the trail by doing it one segment at a time. However, there has been a really nice increase in through hikers. And through hiking is a occupation for a lot of people, it turns out. Um, and usually through hikers start with the Appalachian Trail, the Continental Divide Trail, the Pacific Crest Trail. Those are kind of the, the big three trails. But we've been getting more and more through hikers. Last year, I think we had about 38 people attempt a through hike of the Ice Age Trail, which we have never had that many before. And most of those hikers were coming off of different trails. And what was interesting was at the beginning of the season. So our through hiking season typically starts in about April. And we had like four or five hikers that had previously done the Appalachian Trail. And they thought, oh, 1,200 miles in Wisconsin, no problem. Well, a few of them abandoned because they did not like how lonely they were on the trail. When you hike through hike the Appalachian Trail, you are literally surrounded by 20, 30 people. So the people who came to the Ice Age Trail, you know, if they started in the Western Terminus, they would go days without seeing anybody. And that was hard for some people to handle. But other through hikers really enjoy the solitude of the trail. And, you know, they took that as the challenge. So we might not have, you know, the cliffs of the Continental Divide Trail or, you know, the rocks of the Appalachian Trail. Um, but we do, the Ice Age Trail does have its own challenges, solitude being one of them. Hmm. Can you tell me about the thousand miler recognition? Sure. We recognize hikers as thousand milers when they have completed the entire trail. So again, if you hike from one terminus to the other terminus, including all of the connector routes between segments, you become a thousand miler. And it's a, you know, scout's honor type system. And when you complete the trail, then we, the Alliance asks you to fill out an application and that just states, you know, what your starting date was, what your end date was. And we have a little um, questionnaire and then also ask people to submit a essay about their hiking experience. And we have, as of today, we have 420 people who have been recognized as thousand milers. And what's interesting about that is that it took 20 years for the first 200 people to become thousand milers. And it's only taken a little over two years for the next 220 people to become thousand milers. So the Ice Age Trail has really um, picked up steam and people are really excited about it. And not just, you know, hiking one segment, but hiking the entire trail, which is exciting. You talked about kind of the small towns that the trail can bring people through. So what is an Ice Age Trail community? So an Ice Age Trail community is a community that has decided that, yes, the trail is a benefit to them. And it's a cooperative agreement, really, between the Ice Age Trail Alliance and the Ice Age Trail community, where we promote the community and they promote the trail. One of those communities is Rib Lake in the northern part of the state, and there are some projects that people can participate in happening there this month and next. Can you tell me about those? Yeah, we are going to have multiple projects in Rib Lake this year. It's all an effort to create new trail and open new miles up in Taylor County. 
um, the projects have been going on for a few years now, but we are committed to opening the trail this year, which is really exciting. So there's, I always tell people there's kind of two sides to the alliance. There's the side um, of hikers, and then there's the side of trail builders. Um, without our volunteer trail builders, there would be no trail. Um, the alliance does is the the member and volunteer organization that actually builds and maintains the trail. So it's not the National Park Service, it's not the DNR, it's the alliance that puts the volunteers out, organizes the volunteers in order to build trail. And um, we will be having yeah multiple events this year, beginning at the end of April in Rib Lake, and they're really you know fun com community events in that people come from all over the state. Some even come up from Illinois. They spend the weekend um, camping and then working on the trail. It'll just be, it'll be really exciting to be in Rib Lake multiple times this year and to get the trail open. And we are planning to have a big celebration and ribbon cutting ceremony for the new trail that we are creating on October 1st. Amanda, if people are thinking about helping out with that project, want to do some trail building, or just want to visit this part of the trail, what else is there to do around Rib Lake? Rib Lake has so much to offer the outdoor recreation enthusiast. There are several miles of scenic ATV and UTV trails in Taylor County and nearby Price County. You can also discover a lot of public lakes that are great for fishing or paddling. In fact, the governor's fishing opener is being held May 6th in the Phillips chain of lakes, which is just a short drive north of Rib Lake and offers lots of family-friendly events. But if you want to stick close to the village of Rib Lake, check out its namesake lake. It's 320 acres. It has two boat launches, three wheelchair accessible docks for fishing. And one of its really unexpected features is Pine Island. This wooded island offers three primitive campsites that you can paddle or boat up to, pitch a tent for the night, and enjoy a private camping trip. These campsites are free to use. They're generally available between mid-April and mid-October. But if you've you know, spent a big day hiking on the Ice Age Trail, or maybe you've been helping with one of those trail building projects, and you're looking for a little more comfort, you could also check out Camp 28 right across from Grib Lake. The hotel and its name pay tribute to the area's rustic logging routes. They also have an on-site restaurant and bar serving up classic American pub food, and the rooms have great views of Rib Lake. Camp 28 is a favorite amongst the trail building teams. And Tim's Hill, that's the highest point in the state, is also nearby. So, Amanda, why would you recommend people make a stop there? This area of Wisconsin is known for its rugged forests. And when you visit Tim's Hill, you can climb up an observation tower to take in that natural beauty from a different perspective. You'll get sweeping views of woodland stretching out for miles. You can get to Tim's Hill County Park uh, via a 10-mile path from the Ice Age Trail. So if you're hiking part of the trail, there is a connection directly to Tim's Hill County Park, or is it just a short drive from Rib Lake? And after you've soaked in all those views, you've climbed some stairs, you've done quite a bit of hiking, you're probably gonna be hungry. So it is a great thing that Hill of the Beans restaurant is right at the foot of Tim's Hill. They serve a delicious breakfast like fluffy omelets and corned beef and hash. And on the lunch menu, you'll find a mix of creative panini sandwiches, salads and soups. So it's really a great way to fuel up for further adventures in the Rib Lake area and on the Ice Age Trail. People might think they need to go to the Pacific Crest Trail, like you were mentioning, Melissa, to have a through hiking experience. But in fact, you don't even need to leave the state. So for both of you, what do you think the Ice Age Trail brings to the people of Wisconsin? Well, I think the Ice Age Trail is an absolute asset to the state. You know, a lot of people don't realize that it's a national scenic trail. And it's unfortunate because, you know, you hear a lot about the problems with the national parks or that you have to have reservations to get into the national parks and oh the national parks are so crowded but the ice age trail can provide a national park like experience you know and within just a couple hours drive and honestly it's it's an amazing trail and it's an amazing thing to explore you know it will take you to the most amazing places in the state and they are places that i guarantee you did not know exist and Amanda? 
I agree with Melissa. I feel the Ice Age Trail helps us build a deeper appreciation for the uniqueness of Wisconsin. I mean, to have one of just 11 national scenic trails entirely contained within our state is really incredible. And it passes through 30 different Wisconsin counties. It connects all of these trail communities that are hundreds of miles apart to one another. It, the trail helps tell the story of how the last Ice Age shaped our landscape and it invites us to experience that unique geography ourselves as we enjoy the outdoors today across Wisconsin. Really, the Ice Age Trail is such a special opportunity to bring Wisconsin's past to life for folks in the present, to make memories and discover some unexpected adventures. You know, the Ice Age Trail also gives you a variety of experiences. You have the, the rural Northwoods feel, you have urban walks, you have beach walks. I mean, it's like, it's a bunch of different national parks all combined into one. Well, Amanda and Melissa, thank you so much for joining me here on Lake Effect. Thank you. Thank you. Amanda Weibel is the communications officer for Travel Wisconsin. Melissa Purick is the director of marketing and community relations at the Ice Age Trail Alliance. They spoke with Lake Effect's Becky Mortensen for our Wandering Wisconsin series, which you can find and download as a podcast. Wandering Wisconsin is a partnership between Travel Wisconsin and WUWM.